My name is Yonatan Ger. I'm the director of Amnesty International in Israel. I've been working for three years now, uh, prior to which I've worked for gay rights in Israel and before that for Greenpeace Mediterranean, working um, throughout the entire region. We work in Israel mostly on violations of human rights taking place in the context of uh, the occupation of the Palestinian territories. We work on the discrimination of Palestinian citizens of Israel and we work on uh, the issue of refugees and asylum seekers which are not being treated in Israel as Israel must according to the refugee convention. These are a lot of big issues that can make one feel very hopeless. I think my motivation is the idea that being part of Amnesty, I have a real opportunity to affect change. Amnesty can affect real change when its supporters around the world take action together with us. So this is an immense privilege to be able to work uh, on these issues, to see concrete results and to be able to work with people around the world, including here in Luxembourg, who do so much to help our reality back home. I think something Amnesty has become very accustomed to, whenever it criticizes the actions of a certain country, that country will uh, say that Amnesty is biased against that country. We've heard it uh, on record from Israel, from Syria, from the United States, from Russia, from China, pretty much every country we criticize for their human rights record will, uh, will, will say that we are uh, biased, which Amnesty is, has come to, uh, to be used to. Um, living in the country where uh, you're doing that criticizing is a little bit more difficult. Um, indeed, in Israel, it's very uncomfortable for people to hear that uh, their government, that their army is violating human rights, uh, in some cases uh, uh, committing war crimes. Um, the person saying that, if they are uh, Israeli, uh, can often be considered uh, traitors or sellouts, um, which is, yes, it's an uncomfortable position to be in, but I think it would be even more uncomfortable living in a country that is carrying out these actions and doing nothing. I think that's a reality that I could not live with. Our daily reality during the context was indeed a complex one, a reality in which uh, several times during the day our staff needed to evacuate our office while uh, the sirens were uh, wailing and to move all the staff to our secure location for a few minutes until we hear the loud bangs that we know mean the end of this current missile attack. Um, it's very not fun to be on one end of a conflict. In this conflict we were for sure on the easier end of it. The reality on the other side of the conflict was um, an atrocity. Um, we had the privilege of being protected by, uh, by a missile defense system, by sirens, uh, defenses that were not available on the other side of this conflict. We were working a lot to document human rights violations, both uh, uh, the missile attacks as well as um, limits to freedom of speech that we saw a lot during this last conflict, particularly when uh, Palestinian citizens of Israel attempted to demonstrate, to exercise their freedom of expression and were cracked down on by police and by border patrol brutally and not allowed to demonstrate and, and express their views, uh, rights that we as, uh, that myself as a Jew living in Tel Aviv very much have. And so these are some of the realities that we faced and challenges in trying to advance human rights during this conflict. Luxembourg is doing, has been doing a lot of great work in support of human rights around the world generally, in our part of the world in particular. This year and next year it has a unique opportunity to be able to increase its effect in a few different ways. It sits on the uh, UN Security Council, which allows it to uh, um, hear our voice, our calling on the Security Council to refer the last conflict, both parties, both Israel and the armed 
groups in Gaza to the International Criminal Court prosecutor to investigate possible war crimes conducted uh, during the last conflict. It also is about to be uh, the EU president for the second half of 2015. I think this allows Luxembourg to really shape part of, uh, of, of the European Union's message. I think the EU could do more to attach its support to countries around the world to their human rights track record. And if Luxembourg could be more and more of a voice in that direction, it could make a large difference around the world. As well, of course, as its continued uh, call in bilateral relations with uh, the government of Israel, I think continuing to raise a voice consistently for improving human rights could go a long way. And I think this is where uh, people in Luxembourg come in to continue to remind the government here of the necessity to do so. Please keep signing petitions, keep taking part in amnesty actions, uh, keep supporting amnesty here and together we can make a real difference in human rights around the world, including in my country.